Now, before I start, thanks. Uh, before I start, uh, not many people know this, but data analytics clearly proves that the internet was actually invented for people to post pictures <laughs> of cute cats. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Analytics bears that out. And you reminded me of it when in your presentation that cute cat appeared. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you before I, before I start into my, into my short uh, presentation. Now, what Chris asked me to do uh, when we talked about uh, the, my participation here was to kind of try and address three questions. Uh, his first question to me was, what kind of big data projects GE engaged in and, and why did we prioritize the way we prioritized? And um, the answer to that is, is pretty simple. We had two areas that we focused around. One was the customer and can we add value to what we actually give to a customer and can, can we improve what we have to offer? So we were, we were searching around that question and I have one example that I want to show and share with you that kind of illustrates how we went about this. And the other area clearly internally focused around can we improve efficiencies, can we drive costs down, can we uh, make things easier and better for the people that work at GE. So that was the second search area, and I have one example uh, from that area. So that is how I start out with, and that is also the most improvised part of the uh, presentation, because initially I didn't think I was, I was going to bring any visuals, but since everyone here brought these overwhelmingly fantastic visuals, I thought, how can I not bring any? So I had to kind of improvise something, uh, and I start with uh, the uh, first one, and um, I'm not sure this is actually going to work. Uh, is he pulling them up? Yeah, he is. So the first one, I do, ah, there is internet. Whew. So that, that's good. So the first one is actually something we called Flight Quest. Um, and it goes in search of efficiency in airline industry. And really, what, what we're trying to do is to look at data, rich data, contextual data for an airline and identify ways in which we could reduce the overall delay for the entire fleet of that airline uh, in any given day. And if we could do that, if we could bring down the average delay of that airline, then that would be a benefit that the airline would get. And so we started out uh, with some data. We had weather data. We had uh, data from radar, like real-time data on flight movements across the US of not just that airline, but every plane in the sky. We had ground data from the air control that gave us information on the con levels of congestion at every single individual airport at any moment in time. So, I mean, when you look at an airport like San Francisco, it might be that they have a bottleneck and that, that planes have to be put into a waiting circle. Uh, and so, um, what we were trying to do is look at rich sets of data, combine them, and then see what came out of them. And very quickly, we identified a major deficiency in our plan to do this alone, which was that we didn't have a clue where to start and what to look for. Right? And, uh, and so what we decided was uh, we, we take the data that we have, so the airline data that they can provide, the uh, flight movement data from the real-time radars, the weather data, the ground movement data, and we put it on the internet, and we invite everyone globally to download the data and to work on the problem as to how you improve uh, the uh, overall on time of that airline. And that airline was Alaska Airlines. Uh, and they themselves had already started with, um, like they were down to nine minutes on average for across the whole fleet. They have 195 planes in the air uh, every day. And um, they were down to about yeah, nine minutes when we started this. Uh, and then we let the data lose on the internet and all the kind of data scientists around the world at universities and so we're invited to participate and just do this and we actually had a prize so we, we said if you participate and you win this competition so the algorithm that can prove that it can reliably predict the best optimization of the complex problem uh, and that can scale so that we can't just do this for 190 planes, but we can actually do it for 24 airlines at any moment in time, wins, right? And uh, we had over 200 entrants from across the world to uh, participate in this. And uh, I have a video of the winners that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, they did find two and a half minutes of efficiency in this. And just to put this into context for you, 
two and a half minutes of better on-time performance for that airline, just one airline with 190 planes, is the equivalent value of two entire planes per year for them. So it's like adding another two planes to their fleet without you know, a single extra dollar in expense. And that is a huge uh, impact on that particular customer. Uh, and I, I wanted to, you know, and we, we did this with external help, and we d actually didn't kind of sort of talk before, so you're, you're mentioning we, we're kind of playing around with this, was very timely. Uh, I, I have a video of the winners and what motivated them to actually participate, so I wanted to share that with you as well, if I could. Um, I hope. The end goal of the competition is to come up with a model that can be used in flight um, so pilots can know more accurately when they will land at an airport. I'm a public health analyst here in the UK. I met uh, Pavel um, doing a, a competition about three quarters of the way in. Uh, Pavel put a post on a forum asking if anybody wanted to, to form a team um, and I replied to that. I am from Warsaw, Poland. I work uh, in a bank as a reporting specialist. G brought out F Flight Quest, which looked a really interesting competition. The Flight Quest competition uh, involved uh, numerous uh, tables with data regarding the flight conditions, like weather, estimations of arrival times uh, given by different systems. And we had to combine this uh, all together, like uh, c uh, cleaning the messy data. We're always striving to improve our performance. We're always reevaluating our aircraft turn process. The recently developed algorithm as part of the Flight Quest Challenge is just another tool that we will continually apply to our process of improvement. We uh, spent about 300 hours on this competition, like, uh, b besides our normal day job, so it's, uh, it's a lot in two months. You know, sometimes you end up eating, eating your dinner at the computer just to, to get something done. to be clear about the goals that you want to achieve. This should, in theory, make air travel more efficient, which will essentially lead on to that feeling better for the passenger and also potentially saving lots of money. So you see, those were not GE uh, staffers. Those were people working in banks or working in some other uh, companies. And you could see the fire in their eyes, the enthusiasm that they shared for solving these complex problems. And that is a main motivator that drives, you know, a lot of the developments is people's heartfelt interest to find answers uh, and, and participate in big things. You know, we have a, we have a center in, in San Ramon in, in the, near Silicon Valley. Uh, and the way we hire people is we promise them that they can take part in projects that change the way the world works projects like these, and it attracts people because money is no longer really the motivator, it is working on projects that have meaning, and these projects that we try and drive with data uh, have real meaning, and uh, people would want to be part of that, and you can see that it, that it really inspires people to give their best and work odd hours to come up, and by the way, these guys were rewarded uh, for it, uh, the first prize was I think $250,000. Uh, uh, that they shared uh, for 300 hours of work to the math, right? And so that, that kind of sort of, as in what big data projects, customer-driven big data projects. Can we add value to customers? Uh, can we add something that improves their business? And can we do it with the data that we have available, right? So that, that was kind of sort of one area in which we focused. The other one, internal efficiency. Uh, we operate a service organization, for example, in the oil and gas environment where we have these pumps that pump oil out of oil wells. So initially an oil well has enough pressure, oil comes out of the oil well, after a while the pressure sinks, you need to put a pump down the, the hole and pump the rest of the oil up. These pumps are about 20 meters long and about that wide because the, the, the borehole is not that very wide. So it's a long, narrow thing, very complex composition, 3,000 feet down in the ground, high pressure, high temperatures. And uh, we don't have endless amounts of technicians that we could kind of monitor every individual oil well in Texas. 
right? So, but your, your oil business has hundreds of thousands of these oil wells spread across you know, uh, an area like Texas or, or other places where oil is being, being uh, produced. And, um, and so we were wondering how we could optimize our service operation and help our technicians to be more effective in deciding where to go each morning because they couldn't cover the entire area, so they had to make decisions about where would they go that day. And what would happen before that was that the, the, the boss of the 20 people or so that, that we had would sit down in the morning and make decisions based on his intuition and experience. He would say, ah, you know, I think we need to go in that area or in that area, and he would send his, his people around based on his best knowledge. And, um, and uh, there was nothing wrong with that, but what could happen is that there was an oil well where the pump went down, and for three weeks the pump just stayed down, right? And, uh, and what we were trying to do is come up with a better way of sending technicians around, and we found algorithms that allowed us to get pump value data extrapolated into the future to see where potentially problems occurred, and then send technicians out to repair before failure, and we could actually improve the productivity of the oil field, at the same time improve the way we use staff in order to uh, um, maintain the productivity of an oil field. So what would we want to do better and more of in the future? Um, combining people with machine learning. I think we find a lot of value in combining machine learning with human interaction, uh, and we get more value out of having a person construct a principal algorithm, but a machine improving on the algorithm over time and, and trying different things to improve the outcomes of the algorithms that have originally been designed by humans. So that, that's kind of the question uh, two. And the last question is, what lessons have you learned uh, about implementing big data projects? Well, one of the most important lessons is secure water rights to the valley. And that is like, make sure that you have the rights to the data that allow you to not just collect it, perform analytics on it, and sell the results, but also you know, do this in a legal framework that is secure. So what we call that the water rights to the valley. It's the, it's the foundation of everything you do. You know, if you have a herd of cattle and you don't have any water, yeah, pff, yeah, you're, you're basically stuffed. So second thing we learned is data is messy. So data doesn't come nice and clean and all prepared, so it's messy and you need to work on it. And, uh, Data is hard to get at because just because machines produce data doesn't mean you can readily access it and pick it up. So data management becomes a core skill in your organization and you need to build capability around data management. That's, that's vitally important. Um, the next thing is once you have the technical hurdles, once you have the data uh, analyst that doesn't help you a thing if you don't understand the commercial value of data, i.e. finding value in the data, which was alluded to several times during the day already, is very, very important. And if you don't have the skills, you can try and hire people that have those commercial skills, understand how they can use data to build value, or you have to go through the long process of building that capability in your organization, which requires legal, finance, HR, to kind of build these things, these capabilities into your organization. And a lot of people underestimate that the need to have HR involved, to have legal involved, to have you know, all sorts of functions involved that have nothing to do with technology and data analytics. So and finally, uh, if you start with big data projects in your organization, start with something you can handle. So start small, we heard that before. Uh, and also start with something you can win. Start with something where you can actually build value around, demonstrate that value around, and once you've demonstrated that value, you can grow your base from there. But if you go out big and you say, I can solve all the problems of this company with big data, uh, and then you fail to deliver you know, in a meaningful time frame, most certainly people will not listen to you second time around. So there are some thoughts on, on, uh, on the questions you posed. Thank you.